Hello friends and welcome. Today I'm going to give you a quick guide to playing Gyrocopter Support. You can play him in the 4 or 5 role. He effectively does the same thing either way. I think he's a really fun hero to play in pubs. He is a strong laner and many people underestimate the damage he does as a support. So you can get some easy kills, have a good laning stage, and hopefully you get to just play out the game as a support and win. But if it does go really long, Gyrocopter can be played as a core as well. So you just start building some right click items and you can start scaling that way. The skill build is pretty straightforward and you can do from level three onwards the exact same thing every game. The main question you're gonna have to ask yourself is at level one, are you starting with Rocket Barrage or are you starting with Homing Missile? And you're gonna take whichever one you didn't take after that. Rocket Barrage does a lot of damage at level one. It's 180 damage on one target, but it has no like priority. So any enemy units in that search radius will split the rockets evenly or randomly actually. It's not like a 50-50 split, it just randomly goes. So you might get more damage one way or the other. But the point is the damage is getting reduced a lot compared to the single target who eats every single rocket. So if you can find the enemy by themselves, if they're a short ranged hero, a melee hero, you catch them in the jungle, you can get tons of rocket barrage damage in, a really good trade, and you know, that's great. But if they can keep their distance, if they have some kind of escape, you use rocket barrage, they jump away, no rocket barrage value there at all. So in that case, you may want to start with homing missile. Homing missile's a little easier to use. You just kind of like use it away from them. And most of the time, the enemy can't kill the missile in time. Be careful if both heroes are right next to each other, especially if they are both ranged. Then they can kill the homing missile. They'll get 50 gold and 20 XP, so don't feed it too much. But a lot of the times, if you wait for them to separate a bit, if you cast it from behind trees, by the time it's running at a hero, it's really hard in the early game for most people to deal with. So at that point, you just want to run at them and attack because they're faced with a choice. Either stand still, fight you, but then they're gonna get hit by the homing missile, and while they're stunned, you're gonna keep attacking, or maybe you're gonna back off, depending on the situation, but you get that choice, they don't because they're stunned. Or they run away to get away from you, they're still gonna get hit by homing missile, they might get away so you decide not to chase, they're like near the tower, creep wave, whatever, that's still okay because they're leaving the creeps. So now you can deny a lot of creeps while they're gone and while they're stunned back there and then you gotta spend time walking back up. So homing missile, you want to time it when like range creeps are low, when banner creeps are getting low and that way you can make them miss while still getting in that trade. And if they run away, you're still happy because you're getting those super value denies at that time. So really, just level one, level two, it's up to you. It depends on the game, but whichever one you don't take, you take that one at level two. And then from there, the rocket barrage value is too good. It starts doing 360 damage and it's got a 6.5 second cooldown. So the damage here on level two rocket barrage is nuts. Power spike here at level three. And then from there, you finish up Rocket Barrage, taking Homing Missile. You're gonna completely skip Flat Cannon because we're building support items. We're not building damage. We're not building attack speed. You don't really need Flat Cannon unless you get an Ags from like an Alchemist or a Roshan. You need one point in Flat Cannon for the Ags to work. Otherwise, if you decide to build damage because it's going late and you scale, then you can take Flat Cannon. Otherwise, just get the attributes. The extra health, the extra mana pool, armor, all of that, way better for a support. Uh, so yeah, I just completely skip flat cannon. Take your ult at any point, and then the talents, pretty straightforward. The health for survivability, more stun duration, more rocket barrage damage, and then the call down is just better. Uh, these three are all flat cannon attacks, but we're not even taking flat cannon, so you know, what do you need it for? The movement speed is kind of nifty, but a lot of times as support gyro, you want to be careful about when you go in because you are a support, you are squishy, right? So in the early to mid game fights, a lot of it is just like homing missile from far away and being careful of when you close to use rocket barrage. And at that point, gyro is naturally fast, so you don't usually need the movement speed to stick next to people. So health tends to be better. For your starting items, there's a couple different things you can do, but essentially you need to decide, do I need to cast a lot of spells here? In that case, you need some form of mana, mangoes or magic stick if it's a good stick game. You need some because your spells are a little bit expensive considering that you're an agility hero, but you're also not going to just like throw them out all the time because you're kind of looking for certain situations, right? Like, hey, this guy's on his own, now I'm gonna use rocket barrage a lot. Or, hey, this creep's coming up, then I'll use uh, homing missile. But you're not just gonna like spam them off cooldown, so you can kind of save your mana till then. So you don't need tons, but once the right opportunity is there, you do want to be able to cast your spells several times because 
Uh, if you didn't notice, Rocket Barrage is only seven second cooldown at most. So in early fights, you can typically use this two to three times depending on the situation. So that means you need 75 mana, 75 mana, 75 mana, plus the homing missile, which is 120. So using it once the situation comes up can be expensive. And that's why a couple mangoes are really useful or that magic stick, if you're getting a lot of stick charges, will be useful. You want to make sure you, when the finally the situation's there, you pop them all and you get that kill. Otherwise, if you're like sitting at full mana, you use one like here and there. You'll stay mostly full mana as you like casually harass them. But yeah, once that opportunity is there, we need enough mana. So if it sticks, if it's mangoes, it's kind of up to you. Like two mangoes is probably enough. Buy more if you're like getting kills because again, you're getting kills off your spells. You need enough mana. So buy more mangoes, buy a clarity if you can. Uh, the stick otherwise will give you that mana. Early raindrops, you know, I mean, you're not going to get a starting item, but like, you know, early game, if it makes sense, you just need enough mana to like go through that spell usage. However, if you're not going to be doing that because they have some kind of mobility that gets away from you, um, they are like anti-mage, right? Burns all your mana. You don't get any, you don't get to use your spells. Then forget that go for heavy right click. So buy a lot of stats and just attack a lot in the laning stage. You might want armor. You could even go for like an early wraith ban. It's not really what you want to do. You're hoping to use your spells because they're so powerful, but that is your backup alternative. You're going to do like a lot of right clicks and otherwise you're just going to do a mix. You're going to right click in the meantime and be ready to use your spells as you need them. You're very short range. So you're probably going to need a second set of tangos. You don't need to buy them right away, but I do recommend being prepared to buy them. So something like this can be really good. You know, a sentry if you need it. Otherwise, you know, just get another iron branch, something like that. For your early game, let's skip that for a little bit. Let's just talk about your core items. You want this shard as soon as you can. So at 15 minutes, ideally, if it's a minute or two after, no big deal. But this shard is really nice. And for pubs, it's even better because many people don't react properly. They keep trying to run away from the rocket. So they're going to take even more damage from this shard. Uh, so this is what's going to give you a lot of damage potential as a support. We want this as soon as possible. In the meantime, if you're having a good game, you can go ahead and maybe just get brown boots, maybe go all the way to tranquil boots. You could get a ring of Basilius for maybe your laning stage if your lane partner uses a lot of mana, or if you know you want to build a veil, you could get that wand, right? These cheap items fit them in, but keep in mind, you don't want to like always buy all of them, especially if you're not having a great game because you want that shard as soon as possible. After that shard, you can then go back to finish these or consider what you're gonna build from there. You have uh, pretty flexible options as gyrocopter support. So just keep in mind, you are looking to play early, you are looking to play active. That's why drums and veil can be a very good option. Not necessarily both, but usually one or the other. You offer a lot of spell damage. So if you have other teammates you're gonna play with that are using a lot of spell damage, then the veil of discord is really nice. But if there's not a lot of spell damage, you know, skip it, you don't need it. Drums can be really nice then, because if they're not a spell damage, it's probably right click damage. And because you want that early active gameplay, you like these early active auras, such as Drums and Veil, that gives more aggressive potential with the way Gyrocopter likes to play. If neither of these are very good or someone else is building them, you know what, you're a support. The Glimmer Cape, the Force Staff, you, you can never go wrong with those. Benefit of Force Staff is that you can actually Force Staff Homing Missile, which can catch some people off guard. You like speed it up a little bit, uh, that can help you get stuns you might otherwise miss. So this one's pretty nice, uh, but either of them works. If you want to go real aggressive as the game continues, E-Blade gets insane, especially if you have the Veil of Discord. So you're massively reducing someone's match persist. They can't even attack your missile to try to kill it. And then they get hit. They are amped. You're rocket barraging them and everything. So this is a crazy amount of damage in the right games for kills. Not usually what you're doing as a support, you know, especially if you're five, but if you're having a really good game or it's going late, you can think about this. Uh, and of course, the Ghost Scepter is just a regular survivability item, so that way no one knows to flame you yet. You're, you're just like, I'm, I'm just Ghost Scepter, totally normal support item. Ha ha ha, E-Blade's coming up, right? So this can be really good. If you want to meme a little bit, the Meteor Hammer does kind of work with the rocket, uh, the missile. It is a long enough stun to get the guaranteed chain stun. But it's a little tough because you don't have mobility naturally as gyrocopter. So especially uh, the missile, you know, it travels so they can walk further away. It can be a little hard to combo the meteor. But if they don't really have a lot of mobility and you just want to like clown a little bit, meteor hammer can technically work. Uh, from there, you know, build what you need. If you're scaling, you're going to go for like right click items, stuff like that. 
uh, but this is typically what you'll see on support gyrocopter. For neutral items, typically anything that's gonna help with your mana regen or mana pool is really nice. I would prioritize those. Otherwise, just get anything that helps with survivability. Uh, special mention to the Grove Bow because it does have that further magic resistance. Uh, so if you are getting the Veil, you're thinking about that E-Blade, uh, then this can be really nice in the early game because you are going to just really shred someone's magic resistance for your high amounts of magic damage. A couple things you might want to know about your spells. I mentioned it earlier, but Rocket Barrage does not prioritize things closer to you or not. It is just a random split between the however many targets are here. In this case, we have two. Uh, other times there may be more. So instead of trying to just get close to your target, you want to try to position in a way, keeping in mind this is your search radius, so that you isolate one target, and that way all your rocket barrages can hit that individual unit. Homing missile can be killed, so be careful if you're casting it near an enemy hero. Of course, if they have a slow attack speed, it's not a big deal, but the more enemy heroes that are there, if they have illusions, stuff like that, things to help them kill it, towers, the, the fountain, if you happen to be doing that, uh, be careful. The homing missile does give 50 gold and 20 XP. In the late game, not a big deal. In the early game, that is kind of a big deal. 50 extra gold in that early laning stage. So be careful how you use it. But typically, if you use it behind a tree, then or just like out of range, then by the time it starts moving, there's not really uh, much time for them to kill it. I mentioned earlier, you can force staff your homing missile. You can actually also force staff it past people. So it's usually not a huge deal. He'll turn around and collide. Um, but typically it's better to get it there sooner rather than like from here directly on you won't like instantly stun if you do something like that so that the four staff effect ends like right in front then it'll be a pretty instant stun but you can actually four staff it past them the enemy can also use four staff on the rocket but it's going to do this they can use psychic cave band to actually push it away or hurricane pike which is pretty nice because then they can attack from however far really fast to try to kill that rocket the rocket doesn't keep vision but the rocket has its own vision, so as it travels, it will find it. And even if the enemy hero has gone invis or just in fog of war, it'll continue to chase that hero. So you'll get to see them a little longer. It will disappear after a bit, but that can allow your team to know where they are trying to juke into the trees, up or down, wherever that rocket will follow. The rocket will proc Lincolns, but not when you cast it, only when the rocket actually collides with the target. Calldown provides 300 flying vision, so you can use it to spot up high ground or in the trees. That's all I've got for you today. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you find him fun if you try him out, and I'll see you in another video.